What's up guys, welcome back to Box Check. Today's video, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be installing a fan inside the engine bay of the WH-12R Mini Excavator. Uh, so if you have one of these machines or you're thinking about getting one of these machines, at, at least this model, when you get it brand new, there's no fan that draws in ambient air and assists in pushing out that hot air. Now, one thing I will say that I do like about this machine is it does have plenty of venting holes um, and it's probably fine, you know, if there's a breeze outside, but, uh, that last dig test video that I did, I noticed that it really getting hot in that engine bay and there was no breeze at all. And that really helped me make my decision that I just need to put some sort of fan in there to help move some air. And that's really all we're after is moving some air. So, uh, that's what we're going to do today. Now, just a quick mention about this fan. I got this off Amazon and it was, it was a whopping $22 before tax. Uh, well worth it in my opinion and quite frankly the thing moves actually a lot of air like i said this one was 22 dollars. you can get them in uh, red black or blue normally i would probably get a black one and but you know what i've got a 10 inch red one i suppose i got red just because i felt like it would show up a little bit better in the video and come on guys it's three dollars cheaper you know so uh, we've got a 10 inch red one and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the camera down and I'm going to show you some of the real estate that we have to work with, at least with this machine. So specifically the WH-12R, whenever you look at this machine in the engine bay, the left hand side is, is primarily occupied by this hydraulic tank and it runs from the top all the way down to the bottom. And immediately behind that, there's the hydraulic pump. And then of course you've got the engine configuration, but there's really no options anywhere on the left-hand side to mount this fan. Now there is this grate on the back, the curved grate, but the last thing I want to do is pull in hot air. I don't want to pull in hot exhaust gases. I want to pull in uh, ambient air to the engine bay. So the left side, the left hemisphere is just kind of out of play, at least for this fan, at least for this 10 inch fan that we got. So uh, moving over to the right hand side, I've got a much more real estate to work with. Um, in particular down on this bottom right hand corner for you nautical guys, that would be the starboard side. This is an optimal place for me to put this. So uh, this would definitely pull in ambient air and not only would it be pulling in ambient air, but it's really going to direct uh, the coolest air to the intake side of the engine. And for the purposes of engine performance, the engine is really going to like this. Engines like cooler air, just generally speaking. So uh, I know there's going to be six different arguments about where I should have put this thing, uh, but this is kind of the only option, at least with this engine in its configuration. Now, just a quick mention about this fan. If I hold this thing upright, I'm going to show you uh, that it has an open side where there, there is no grate on the fan. And that's actually where it pulls from and it pushes the air that it's pulling through its plastic grate. So that's kind of the way this thing works. Um, now this WH-12R, it also has some uh, preloaded wiring. Now when I first got this machine uh, and I was kind of doing my initial inspection, I wasn't sure what these wires went to. You just kind of never know with these machines. Uh, and somebody actually mentioned, hey, that's a, that's a preload for lights. And as it turns out, that is, that's accurate. I actually used a multimeter and tested all three wires and just confirmed the black is confirmed to be the ground on this machine. And there is a yellow wire with a green tracer and that is powered str strictly by the uh, on or the switch or the accessory. People have different terms for that, but when you turn that switch to the on position, power is delivered to the yellow wire with a green tracer. Now the third one, it's a minty green color. That's the one if you're running your machine and you flip the light switch, it is going to power some lights. So if you want additional lights, you would use the mint green wire. Now the way I want to wire this fan, I want to wire this fan kind of like my LRT23, where when I turn this on and the engine's running, the fan is on. You don't have to do any, there's no thought process. It's just on every time you're running that machine. With that being said, I'm going to use the black wire and the yellow wire with a green tracer. And the way the fan is, um, it's wiring, it has a black and a blue wire. So the black wire is going to tie in with the black. We're going to connect those two together. And then the blue wire is actually going to connect to that 
power source, the accessory on uh, the yellow wire with a green tracer. Now, one final mention, I didn't read anywhere in that listing where this fan is waterproof. Okay, so if you have a machine that, that you leave outside, I wouldn't recommend this fan, you know, strictly because it's not waterproof. I would hate for you to invest in something and then a month later it's not working. Again, if you leave it outside, I probably wouldn't go with this one. I would probably search for some other ones. And there was a ton of them on there. All right, guys, so we have the fan installed now. I've got one bolt here at the top. Uh, and then at the bottom, I originally used the, the zip ties that came with that kit, but the zip ties they really didn't hold on there very securely. So I now have three bolts, uh, easy to put on, easy to remove if I need to remove it. Um, as far as wiring goes, black on black and the blue to the yellow with the green tracer. And what that does is it's powered by the accessory. I'm gonna turn the battery on, the accessory switch on, or the ignition switch just to the on position. You can hear it pulling that airflow in. It's pulling all in right here. Just a visual reference how well it's pulling in. This is a Milwaukee glove and it'll hold that in place. So pulling ambient air in and taking it across the engine this general direction. All right, so uh, I believe that this is going to greatly reduce the, how much uh, just stewing engine heat is, is in this engine compartment. Um, you know, before, whenever I was doing that dig test, there wasn't a great deal of wind. This has plenty of venting, but it's, it's still a lot of heat. So this is definitely going to help out regardless what direction it's flowing. I know there's going to be, you know, six different arguments about which direction it should flow. This is the only space that would hold that 10 inch fan. Uh, if I had to do something over again, I'll be tempted to get maybe an eight inch instead of the 10 inch. It would probably fit in there a little bit better, but that's what I got. And now let's go do the dig test. So look for that video right here. This next video is the maximum depth. What is the maximum depth the WH-12R can go and is the spec accurate? According to that Agritech website, this thing can go 5.41 feet. And I'm gonna show you how far we went. So just click on that video, watch that one. Uh, with that, that's gonna do it for this one. Guys, thank you for watching.